Hello, okay, today I'm going to teach you how to use the basic settings in your DSLR that you bought with the money that you stole. Uh, I'm just joking. So to start you will need a DSLR which means a interchangeable lens camcorder. I don't care which brand, how long is a DSLR. Remember not one of this, one of this. And hopefully it's not something like this because obviously this is not going to work or this. And especially not one of this. This is a point of shoot camera. You cannot use manual settings with the camera like this. Even if you do, you cannot change your lenses. It can even be something like this because this is something that uh, could work because you can change the lenses on the camcorder and you can probably put it on manual mode. So once you have your camera on manual, you need to go through the settings to set it up. These are your four main settings on any DSLR and this is where you're going to be adjusting all the time because the environment always changes. So we're going to start with the shutter speed which is the camera speed meaning that the faster the camera shoots the more can freeze moving objects or fast moving action. The f-stop which is the focus distance meaning that you can shoot scenery to where you get everything in focus so you can shoot a subject to where only the subject is in focus and the rest not. The ISO which is the artificial light which only needs to be used if really necessary. The white balance which needs to be adjusted accordingly to the light environment that you are shooting in. So basically the shutter speed will freeze fast moving action if shot fast enough. As you can see here, they shot at 1000 speed. Or when you have to shoot sports in order for you to freeze the action, you also have to shoot very fast, so this will be your priority. The next thing is the f-stop, meaning you can have less focus distance. It's also used a lot when you shoot portraits because you don't want to have everything in focus, so your f-stop is small in order for you to get just the subject to stand out and not the background. Or when you shoot a scenery, then you have to have everything in focus, so this can be higher. The artificial light which only needs to be used when your photos are too dark because you have to shoot too fast and your f-stop has to be too high in order for you to get everything in focus and then your photos are going to be too dark so you have to compensate by using the ISO which is the artificial light but it only works up to a certain amount because after that it will give you a very bad quality so make sure that also this is in manual and that way you can set it at whatever you need to set it only if you really have to. It goes from 100 to a lot but most cameras can only give you good quality if it goes up to 800 after that your photos will get a very bad quality just because you see something on the screen doesn't mean it actually this is how it's going to come out because the screen is very small and you cannot see the very details that you're getting into the photo and that's mostly because probably your iso is very high and then you'll get crappy stuff like this which means a lot of noise it's called noise by the way and it's because your iso is very high you will get this type of nastiness into your photos that's why you have to put your ISO in manual and use it as low as possible. The next thing is the white balance which means the light color depending on the environment they're shooting in. Meaning this for example it's a very cold color very depressing and this is a very warm color which can also be achieved afterwards especially if you shoot raw you can always change your white balance. Make sure that the white balance is also in manual not in automatic and then you can change it accordingly to the light situation that you're shooting in. The symbols for that are automatic white balance, sunny or daylight, cloudy shade. This indoor lighting which is the old type of bulbs which will give you a very yellow light fluorescent flash custom and custom by value basically to where you can go in between so you just have to pick this accordingly to the environment that you're shooting in if you're shooting outside you'll pick this if you're shooting inside you can pick one of these but in my experience i just use cloudy all the time and then if i need to change the white balance afterwards especially if you should raw which you should you can change this afterwards and you can also make a custom and give your photo the right mood and color so now i'm going to go backwards basically this you will just put on cloudy and, and forget about it the iso you set at minimum which should be 100 or less in today's new cameras and then you're going to be working between these two depending on what's your priority but just to show you the iso smaller value will give you higher quality which means less light into your camera but if you want to have high quality photos like this very nice and clean and crisp then you will shoot with a 100 iso as you can see here and you'll get very nice high quality quality photos. On the other hand, the high value means bad quality but more light into your camera. Up to 800 I think it can be used without losing quality depending on the cameras that you're going to have. As you can see here 200 ISO it's very nice and 
clean still and at 3200 it's very bad which bring us to the other next two settings that you're going to be adjusting between in order for you sometimes not to use this or use this only as much as necessary so the next is the f-stop depending on how much focus do you want in your photo the high value f-stop will give you everything in focus it will get less light in your camera which means you'll have to shoot slower to compensate for losing the light by having a high f number as you can see here this was shot at 5.6 which gives me everything in focus with the iso of 100 to get a high quality but i had to shoot slower and it's also depending on your lens or sometimes if your client asks you to have them in focus and the background at the same time you'll also have to have at least an f8 to get everything in focus from the foreground to the background especially when you're shooting interior design because nothing is moving you can put your camera on a tripod and shoot with a higher f-stop which in this case is 7.1 with iso 100 to get a good quality photo and then you can shoot slower which in this case is 1.3 seconds but it doesn't matter because your camera is not going to move and the environment is not moving and then you can shoot as slow as you have to to get the right amount of light into your camera and this is the easiest type of photography because you don't need to increase your amount of ISO which is the artificial light because you can compensate by shooting slower and having everything in focus. Same thing when you're shooting a scenery you have to make sure that you at least have an f8. Sometimes when you're shooting indoors and you don't have enough light you can also use a flash and that way you can shoot faster because you're using a flash and you can also have a higher f-stop as you can see here. So the higher f-stop everything in focus but you get less light in your camera that means you have to shoot slower the lower f-stop will give you more light in your camera which means it will allow you to shoot faster but you will have a smaller focus distance as you can see here i didn't need so much focus i just want to get his head in focus and that's why i shot with a 2.8 which gave me a lot of light i could shoot faster and i also have to increase my iso which was because this crazy bird was moving too much and i had to be able to shoot fast enough to catch him still and still in focus because when your focus distance is this small if he moves out of it you have to to shoot fast enough you can also use tracking depending if your camera has it or not something goes for this it was shot with 2.8 to gain as much light as i could because the leopard was in the in the more darker area and i shot at 250 with iso 400 i could have shot with this lower and decrease my speed to basically gain more brightness into the photo but you also have to remember that when you shoot with a longer lens that you need to shoot fast enough with a 200 millimeter the minimum it should be about 125 because otherwise you're going to move your camera too much and you're going to get blurry photos as you can see here at 200 millimeter with 125 speed at 2.8 with iso over 100 you get very nice clean photo same thing when you do portraits this was also shot wrong because in the beginning i did some photography courses and they told me that the iso should be at 400 which was wrong for example here i could have shot with this at 100 and shot slower than this because this is way too fast for doing uh, portraits but because i didn't know that i just kept this at 400 which gives me a lot of artificial light and then i had to shoot faster to compensate in order for me to darken the photo because it was during the day and i had a lot of natural light but i still had pretty good quality as you can see it's not so bad my camera can go up to about six something and it still gives me a pretty nice quality same thing with this parrot it was probably shot at 2.8 in order for me to get the background blur and get the bird to stand out this is fully depending on your lens and the smaller this f number is the more expensive the lenses are because it allows you to get more light into your image by having the f stop smaller well you zoomed out but you also have to shoot at least with this lens probably at 250 because it was a 500 millimeter lens the same happened to this tiger the difference is that i shot with a 200 millimeter lens you can also shoot with a smaller lens and get the same effect where you blur the background if it's a 2.8 or even smaller the difference is that with the big lens you can be farther away and with the small lens you have to be very close which in this case would not be possible because the tiger would eat your butt and also if you shoot very small things you have to have the f stop a little bit higher in order to get them in focus but in the same time shoot fast enough to get this bird froze in time which brings us to the shutter speed basically the high shutter speed number means less light into your camera but you can capture fast moving motion also when you shoot sports you have to shoot very fast your priority is the shutter speed and then you can shoot the smaller f-stop so that way you get enough light into your camera and sometimes you also have to increase your iso 
because I really wanted to shoot very fast in order for me to press this ball in the air. The low shutter speed number means more light into your camera, you cannot shoot fast moving motion. 60 would be the slowest you want to shoot when you handheld your camera. Anything lower than that, you will move your camera or if the subjects move, they will get blurry because you don't shoot fast enough in order for you to capture them still. And this is how you adjust your settings in your DSLR in order for you to get the best results out of your photography. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something.